the language system appears to be specialized from specific components of language processing rather than from specific activities such as speaking, repeating, reading, or listening. Indeed, a large part of the research on language has been devoted to the identification of the modular language processor that are specific phonology, lexical semantic, and sentence syntax. The modern concept of brain specialization for language has emerged as a consequence of the development of sophisticated experimental paradigms, but in particular, to the neuroimaging which allowed the study of the language components together with their computational processing demands. And now we can move to this subcomponent and which are the technique which allowed to uh, reach this evidence, structural MRI and functional MRI, to see the activation of the brain's cognitive systems, to see the fiber tracts which connect these systems, to measure the volume of the brain, and to investigate the degree, the level of connectivity among systems. So where are the language processors? In the left hemisphere, this is a real anatomical image of the brain, of the left hemisphere in particular. And in this part of our brain, realize the language with specific activation, as you can see, from this meta-analysis, which included more than 100 studies with functional MRI, and the precise activation related to the language subcomponents. And so let's start with the phonology. What's phonology? Is? It is the sound of languages. A, E, I, O. So phonemes, syllables, which are the fundamental part of languages, are processed in the brain in the region you see here with the little dots, which represent activation, in the frontal region, in the frontal region, posterior temporal, inferior parietal. And what about the lexical semantics, which is a higher level? Home, beauty, mountain, concert, happiness, freedom, book, hammer, chair, mug, bread, cat. When the brain listens to the words, a larger areas of the brain are activated. And still, these are in the left hemisphere, particularly in the front and extensively in the temporal lobe, because the temporal lobe includes the representation of the meaning of the word for language. And what about syntax? Where is Jane? She is in the living room. What is she doing? She is playing the piano. Where is the car? It is in the garage. Where is the dog? The dog is in front of the door. What is the dog doing? The dog is eating. When we listen or we produce sentences such as these you are listening, the brain is activated in shared but specific structures, which are really devoted to the processing of syntax. So the way the words are built up to produce a full uh, language. What about the right hemisphere? Right hemisphere, yes, it is also involved in the language, in particular for the prosody, which means that it is involved in the processing of the stress of the word, or the pauses between syllables, words, sentences, which really provide a full comprehension and a well production of languages. Here you can see structural MRI with the definition of the major fiber tracks on the left and on the right, what neuroscience provided in the last years. So the major dorsal and ventral language streams, which connect the region I showed you before, which are activated for language to component. This is a very interesting aspect, which shows that the neural for language is already active at birth because we are provided with this device. When little children like this one listen 
to this story. A little girl came into the house. This little girl had golden curls that tumbled down her back to her waist. They, of course, cannot understand the meaning of the words, but the brain reacts to the sound of language and the related areas are already fully active. What about music? Music-related neural structures are shared with language and when newborn listen to sound like this, The brain is activated like in adults because we have the device which will allow us along our development and all the life to process the language and musical stimuli. Now a fundamental question came out for neurosciences and for the other languages, apart English or Italian. We absolutely know that whatever language is used, the same neural substrate is activated. So the temporal, the parietal, and the frontal region I showed you before, for all the subcomponents are activated for all the languages. And here is a nice representation for that. So we have a unique device. And this is true also for the signed languages, which are just movement but with a meaning, with a syntax. So this is real language. And since it is real language, you can appreciate to the right deaf signs and spoken hearing people, the areas of the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere are the same, apart a little component of the visual system for the sign language because there's a more visual aspect. Now, I think this is a crucial, interesting thing related to languages. When we use more than one language, we can create compensation, plasticity in our brain, which can cope with neurodegeneration in our brain. And this was demonstrated by several important works, also from our laboratory, that bilingualism can create brain reset and so delay the onset of dementia. And which are the mechanisms for that? How bilingual is protect against dementia? Through brain research, you can see here that bilinguals have more large brain areas which can cope with the neurodegeneration, with brain compensation. So the more the language are spoken, the higher is the connection between the language area and with increased connectivity. So the integration of the language systems and of other cognitive systems are stronger in bilinguals and polyglot than in monolinguals, and all this cope with neurodegeneration, delaying the onset of cognitive deficits. I will leave you with some sentences which define uh, languages from a neuroscience, uh, poetical, philosophical point of view, and uh, thank you. Mm -hmm.